Welcome back to Thalia's Cakes. In today's video, we're going to be making one of my subscribers' cake tutorial request, which was a Baby Boy Candyland theme cake. But since the fault line technique is trending, you already know your girl had to. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this tutorial. If you enjoy fun cake decorating and other cake-related stuff, you might want to consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss another video. All right, let's get started. For some reason, I had a really hard time finding blue candy at the stores, so your girl had to get a little creative and improvise. So I bought white chocolate lint balls, and then I covered them in gum paste glue, and then rolled them into these blue sprinkles from Wilton. And then I set them off to the side to dry overnight. I also made these white ones as well. To make the baby lollipop face, I made it out of fondant. I did use some Tylos powder to make it like harden a lot faster. And then once that was mixed in, I flattened it out using my fondant smoother and shaped the chin using my fingers at the bottom like this. And then I added his cute little nose. And of course the baby needs to breathe, it needs his little nostril. So I went ahead and I used my fondant tool to make little huequitos for his nose. To make the eyes, I used this fondant tool right here. Super simple. All you have to do is just press it down into the face like this. And then you get something like that, you know? And then I also made him a binky. To make that, all I did was flatten out a circle. And then I pushed in my pointer finger to the center on top of it like this. And then I glued it on top. And then I gave him little indents on each side with this balling tool just to give him like more like, you know, more of a cute smile. And then to finish up the binky, I added a little circle to the center and then a little white string of fondant for the handle. And lastly, I added his hairs, ears, and a little bit of blush using pink luster. And to make your boy fly, I gave him a little diamond earring. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> to stick a lollipop stick inside, I used this kebab stick to just like make the hole. Make sure when you're placing in the kebab stick, you kind of like twist as you go slowly because then you can mess up the face. And then I slowly took it back out and replaced it with a lollipop stick. Now we can move on to teaching you how I made my baby bottle. So for this, I mixed Tylos powder in my fondant again, and I rolled it out thick. And to get the bottle shape, I used this milk bottle fondant cutter that I already had, and then I got rid of the top part. And I actually bought that milk bottle fondant cutter for a past cake tutorial that I did, which was a Cookie Monster cake that I made for my nephew. If you would like to see the cake tutorial to this video, I will be leaving it down in the description box so you can watch it after this video is over. To make the nibble, I made myself a paper template and traced it out using my X-Acto knife. Once that was done, I glued on a blue rectangle on top of the bottle and then I glued my nibble on top and gave the bottle a little measurement lines like this so that it could just add more detail. And then I also gave the nipple lid some detail. And lastly, I did the same exact thing that I did for the baby lollipop, which was making the hole with the kebab stick and then replacing it with the lollipop stick. Okay, now we are ready to start making or to start doing the cake decorating portion, okay, let's go. I went ahead, leveled and stacked the cake. I'm going to give this a crumb coat using my Swiss Meringue buttercream. And if you would like that buttercream recipe, by the way, I'll be leaving it down below in the description box. For the font line, I'm using these sprinkles that I got from Gualmart, okay? And it was only 75 cents. Like, I snatched that off the shelf so fast, girl. We're a right? 
Anywho, I grabbed a handful of sprinkles, slapped that on all around the sides of the cake like this. I highly recommend putting a big bowl or a tray of some sort underneath to avoid like that crazy sprinkle mess. And then on the bright side of that, you can always just scoop up the sprinkles that fall in the tray and reuse them. If you get some sprinkles that stick on like to the very bottom or to the very top where you don't want it, just get a spoon and just like take it off. So that way later when you go to put on the buttercream and then you bench scrape it, it won't show through the buttercream because that tends to happen. Now you can add buttercream to the top of the cake, spread it out, and then add little bits of buttercream with your also spatula to the sides of the cake all around. When you do the fault line technique, you wanna make sure as you're adding the buttercream around like you know, the top and the bottom, you don't wanna to add too much buttercream. Because if you do, when you go to bench scrape it, as you bench scrape it, the buttercream is starting to spread and it'll thicken, like it'll widen. So if you put too much, then your little fault line is gonna be like this. And it's gonna look stupid. So you just don't wanna to add too much buttercream. It just looks whack. I started to realize if I didn't add any extra detail to the fault line, it was gonna just look really plain and basic and boring. So I decided to just go through my sprinkles that I had already and pick out different pieces that I liked from them and added to my cake. Like these little silver stars, I got them from one of my Hilton mixes. And then I used these blue non from another sprinkle mix. It's all about being creative, you know what I mean? And then I went ahead and put some buttercream at the bottom of the cake like this, little by little. And then once that was covered all around, I used my bench scraper to smooth it out. Once that was good, I cleaned up the top of my cake. And once that was done, I picked up my cake, which was super nerve-wracking. Did you see how I picked that up? Super scary. Anyways, and then I placed it into my refrigerator for 30 minutes. Sorry to interrupt the tutorial, but I gotta pick another cake tutorial request. And just so you know, if you're interested in putting in a video request, you do have to wait until these go first. Okay, because I want to make sure I get everybody. So, let me pick the next one. Okay, I got one. Rose Gold Cake by Charisma Zamora. Oh, girl. I know you one of my top fans, so I am so sorry para ti, pero yeah, girl, Gary. I've been wanting to do that cake tutorial for the longest, so stay tuned for that. Like I always say, give me some time to make the content, okay? Because it takes me a little bit to make it. All right, let's get back to the video. After 30 minutes, I took it out and began to paint some silver edible paint to the top and to the bottom like this. And now for the fun part, we can add on all the dulces to this cake. I got these lollipops from Rick and Rolf for only $2.99. What a bargain, right? I mean, hello, look at the comparable value. $5. And for a little razzle dazzle, you already know me, I'm extra. I decided to cover each lollipop in some blue luster dust. First, I'm going to place in the baby boy. And then I'm going to place in blue lollipops on each side. And then I added in the milk bottle behind him. Next, I'm going to use this French piping tip and pipe four white and then pipe four blue. I 
remember those glittery bolas that I made earlier. Well, I'm going to place them on top of each one, and the blue ones will go on the white, and the white ones will go on the blue. And lastly, I thought it would be best if I added two more lollipops on each side just to fill in, you know, some space. And that's it, mira vaya que lindo el chichi, look how cute the baby is, Oh. I would like to thank Floresa for requesting this cake tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I made this specially para ti. If you give this cake a try, please tag me on my Facebook or my Instagram because I would love to share your work on my Instagram or my Facebook and tag you in it so that you can see. If you're new here, click the circle button right over here to subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to like 300 likes. Thank you so much. Share this video with a friend. God bless. When you do the whole font line technique, you wanna... I'm calling it font line. It's fault line. Oh my gosh.